Hello, Nuggets. Oh, it's been a while. Um, so I actually got an email in my inbox, which made me look at my that particular email account, which I very rarely look at, because I use it mostly for spam. And then I figured out, oh wait, this is also my email account for my YouTube account. And I actually have a few questions. And I've been gone for a month, and a couple of people asking what's going on. Someone asked about the play. Someone asked, where the fuck do you go? Um, from the massive amount of subscribers I have. Okay, so I haven't done an email. I just brought up my page in a month. Um, and I think the reason is, honestly, I've been a little depressed. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I've always kind of like, my mother was depressed all her life. But hers was clinical depression, right? So... This was a chemical imbalance. I'm pretty sure mine isn't. Mine is just my personality. <laughs> um, yeah, just being a bit depressed. I feel like I'm going through a midlife crisis. The problem is, is that I, I keep saying I'm going through a midlife crisis. Or I feel like I've said that multiple times in my life. And I think I actually did a video about it. It's not one crisis. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. But it's, it's not one crisis. It's multiple. And I'm in another one, I feel. Like, you know, I'm 50 this year. Um, and you know, when you, when you're like a jack of all trades, which is what I am, which is, I just keep moving from job to job or, or passion to passion and interest to interest. Uh, it keeps your life very exciting. It makes you interesting at parties, you know, but, uh, when you get one of those itchy feet urges to move on when you're 50, um, it's chaos and it's stressful and, uh, I, it's like, you know, my mind is watching my brain saying, Right, my brain is watching my mind. One of them is watching the other one saying, what the fuck are you doing? You can't do this again. Stick with what you know. But I get itchy feet. I want to change lives. You know, but you know, when you're 25, you can go out and get a new job and get paid 25,000 a year and that's okay. You'll get by. You can't do that when you're 50. I've got a mortgage to pay. Anyway, so a little depressed rubbed off on the marriage Laura and I have been a little stressed out and you know um, a lot of things going on so I'm still writing I'm being dedicated with that um, okay so let's update on what some of the things have done so we had a reading of my second play uh, that went really well Laura cast it and she cast it perfectly like literally they were just perfect it was a perfect cast it was extraordinary and they did an amazing job. They did it for free. It still astounds me. Actors are amazing. Just love their craft so much. They'll just come out and read for free. They don't mind. Um, so we had eight people sitting around the table. It was hosted at one of the readers, a guy called Tom, who just gave up his house. He was like, yeah, come over to my house. I'll have eight people here. I'll put food up. We brought tons of food. <laughs> we brought, I brought like four bags of food. Because that's how I show my love, I guess. I brought four bags of food. Um, we didn't eat any of it. Because the actors were just like, oh, we're just here to read. So, you know, they read some... Actually, they did eat some of the food he put out. Interesting. Maybe I'm just cheap. I'm low class. So the reading went really well. Um, and Scott, uh, the director, he's directed some of Laura's productions. Like, again, it's amazing. I say I love actors. This guy, so Scott drove down from San Francisco just to be the, the reading. And he's not even reading. He's directing. So he just came to listen to it. Because he'd read the play, he thought it was pretty good, he wanted to hear it. He drove all the way down just to be present at this night and to send an email out and to kind of set the tone for what he wanted. He just kind of, he came, he drove six hours to give like two notes. Now it turns out those two notes were fucking brilliant and they totally shaped the reading. But that just blows my mind, you know. I think he might be a little bit like a kindred spirit in some ways because I feel like that about things. I, I know if someone else looks at that, they're like, oh my God, that's an amazing thing to do. But it's also a bit selfish. It's like, no, it's what I want to do. It's exciting to me. It's an adventure. It's something to fill the gaps, you know, and, or, or those spaces in my life to say, yeah, I drove six hours to go listen to a play reading. Anyway, so Scott drove all the way down. Amazing. The play reading went really well. I mean, really well. It's definitely the best thing I've written. Uh, got some notes from it, which I thought were excellent really incisive um i'm due to start back on the play this week i took a week away from it so i could get perspective but i'm going to rewrite it 
this week. Well, it's not a huge rewrite. It's just just some tweaks and some adjustments. But it's a really good play. I'm really happy with it. It's funny. It's entertaining. The characters are well drawn. It's a good play. This will run. <laughs> if we can ever, if I can ever publicise myself, it will run. Okay, so that's what's happening with that play. The pilot, nothing. Nothing is happening. Um, you know, I depend a lot on Laura being the front foot on that as the producer, and she's got way too much going on. And she needs to put some stuff on the back burner. So I'm actually glad nothing's going on, because she's got her business to run, she's got a career to run, and it's a lot, right? It's a lot of stuff. Um, she's thinking she can do five things at once, when if you're starting a business, that's what you can do, one thing, you know? And that's all she's focusing on right now. So the pilot's on hold, it's all right. I've done, I actually did a little rewrite on it, we decided to change a couple of scenes around, but... Other than that, nothing. Uh, I wrote um, another short, which I'm going to be doing with my friend Jarrett. We went out and location hunted it. Um, this is just a simple little thing because I want to get shooting because at Christmas, have I, done a, have I not done one since Christmas? Anyway, I got one of these. I got an iPhone. Hey! See, these are the circles I move in. Very rich people in my life. Uh, my stepfather brought me this. And this is the good one. Yeah, I'm very a very lucky man. This is the iPhone 11 whatever, right? The Pro Max. Is it the Pro Max? Anyway, it's the, it's the best one, whatever the best one is. Camera's fantastic. Uh, I shot a couple of things on it. I have like a camera gimbal something. I think I brought that out before. I don't know what that is. Um, I shot a couple of things. It looks great. Um, trying to generate energy to fight, the, to combat the depression to combat that, that melancholy that I have. Um, I don't want to call it depression. Um, but to fight the melancholy. Uh, so I wrote a script in two days. It's uh, He's going to direct it or we're going to direct it together. I don't know. We've got to figure that bit out. We've already location scouted. Uh, we know the general area. We're now going to go, uh, actually, maybe today. Or no, next week, next week. We're going next week to actually nail down. Okay, we're shooting this scene here, this scene here. It's a very simple script. So we don't need anything. There's a couple of props I need to make, but they're just very simple. Oh, we need a gun. I mean, it's going to make me think I need to rewrite it. But it's a post-apocalyptic, it's a dystopian world, rather. So that a gun is necessary. So I have to go buy a thing, a toy gun, I guess. I miss Toys R Us in moments like this. So there's that going on. Um, I don't know. I think I probably forgot some comments or some questions. But... You know, you're probably all well gone. But now I can show all my... I'm 14, can I get circumcised for free or dirt cheap? <laughs> well, I wouldn't do it, firstly. Wait until you're older to make that decision. Um, I wonder why you want to get circumcised at 14. Is it because you meant you heard staying power? You think that's the most important thing? Well, firstly, it will come. Staying power will just come. Hey. Well, it just happened. Right, it just feels like it won't, but it will. You just get used to it, you know. There's there's some tips. Ask your older friends if you have a brother or whatever. Ask your older friends some tips to help with that. Um, but no, don't get circumcised. Can you get done for free though? Just to answer the question in case there's something I don't know. Can I get circumcised for free or dirt cheap? Well, it depends on what you consider dirt cheap. Free, yes, if you have a medical condition. I would assume also if you're 14, your parents would be able to deal with that. Um, if you don't have insurance, no, it's going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, unless you go to like Canada or Mexico. Do you have a relative? Go to England, Canada, somewhere like that, that has national health service. You know that thing that we should have and we don't. You could probably get it done there. Um, Tyler Sweet said, is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to have gone very quiet. Sorry, mate. Yes, I have. Um, that's the depression. No, it sneaks up on you and just fucking takes over your life. It's frustrating as hell. It really is. Lack of motivation, gaining weight. I just can't seem to get anything done. Anyway, I don't want to be depressing on this. I'm writing though. That's the thing, I'm writing. Although I haven't written for like a week. I think that's second night blues though. I think that's because after the play reading, you know, the play just poured out of me. I wrote it very quickly, three days. I wrote the whole play in three days. And then about five or six days of rewrites like on and off but not full days like just kind of picking through it you know so it was came out of me just poured out of me 
And I think I felt just spent. So I haven't written for a week. I've got to get back on the horse. Oh no, I wrote the short. I am writing. I don't know what I'm talking about. I am writing. I just feel guilty when I take a day or two's break. If I don't write for two days, I'm like, oh my God, you're a piece of shit. So anyway, that's, I think it, the rest of the stuff, the rest of the stuff, there's only like 20 of you out there. Anyway, that's it. What was Ken Mills comment? I wonder what happened. He seems to have suddenly stopped. <laughs> Smart, insightful. Oh, all right. Thanks, mate. Smart, insightful guy. Enjoy content. Maybe too busy with the plot play. You started with the best intentions set. Oh, I can't. Didn't show me the whole thing. Oh, yes, it does. No. He started with the best of intentions, set the bar high, then lost interest. Shame. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Uh, although I, losing the interest wasn't really losing interest in doing videos. It was losing interest in everything in life. And so, you know. All right, this has gone on far too long. So today I'm going to write. I'm going to play with this amazing phone. Fucking hell, these things are incredible. I know I sound like an old man. But, you know, I've had phones and I, I know them and all that. But they are amazing. Oh, I went back to iPhone. Did I mention that? I was on Android for many years and uh, annoyed with it the entire time. I hated my Samsung. And I'm, I hate Macs. I'm a PC guy through and through. I want flexibility. I want adaptability. I want an affordable PC. And, you know, I don't like the, the whole mantra of the Apple world, you know. But their phones are so much better. And if you're on Android and you've never had an iPhone, you don't know what you're missing. They're just better. It's a better piece of gear. Anyway, I love the phone. It's fantastic. I'm going to start a diet soon. I feel like I should get naked in front of the camera to shame myself. And then go day one. Well, that might be like 28 days later. All right, you little nuggets. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Bye.